we have a surfer missing, then he's been out of sight now for five minutes. It'll be good watching him come in. Could be on for a wave on the head here. Look at the smash. <laughs> I drove him straight into the sand. The girl just sort of appeared quite far out. It's really dangerous. Shark goes on his way. I'm nervous for that. I can't get out the back because the waves are too consistent, they're too big. As lifeguards, we patrol three beaches, Bondi, Bronte and Tamarama. Most of the time it's picture perfect, but we do get the big swells and the dangerous conditions. Um, puts us to the test. What's left of ex-tropical cyclone Oswald has arrived, with gusts of over 100 kilometres an hour churning up dangerous surf, waves at 8 to 10 feet on the coast. The conditions are coming together. A low off the top of New Zealand, another low right on our coast coming down from Queensland. And the two systems are going to combine to provide a pretty substantial, very, very powerful swell, especially around the corner at uh, Tamarama and Bronte. The surf's about 10 or 12 feet around the corner. I've just on my lunch break, so, you know, the waves are solid. There's not many other jobs where you can go surfing in your lunch break when it's big. When the conditions are rough and dangerous, these are sort of our best kind of conditions to go out there and train. It's exciting, really. You know, when it's big, I like to get out there and just, just charge. <laughs> Traditional thing, I suppose. Box time, I've been doing it for years. Well, let's get everything out, ready to go. Everyone knows <laughs> that it's coming on. It's uh, yeah. amazing rides today. Should be good. I'm sucking the towel, towel with Terry and Bacon and I'd wish to go out there. I, I, just, I just want to catch up what, just one, one wave or one or two waves at a time. Poor old Tark's dream's been shattered because he probably won't get that majestic big wave that's reeling off inside his head, so he's down in the dumps. I heard Tarko got a bit angry because he wanted to surf Tama, but bad luck, Tarko. <laughs> we like it when it swells up. The anticipation of getting a really big wave is great, and it's just the boys. Okay. Oh, oh yes. Surfing is my main thing. I love it to death, especially when the waves get massive. Your adrenaline starts pumping. Oh, this day it got up to about 10 foot, and 10 foot around here is big. Tapo on that as well? Yeah. But no matter how long you've been surfing big waves for, it never ceases to be scary. Some big ones out there though on the point. A bit bigger than you think. Maxie got the best one though, the wave of the day. So you can go out there on your lunch break at like two, three. That's not enough time. Mate, it can take a half an hour to get away with me. Mate, you know what the sad oh. thing is? Sometimes you've got a job and you have to. It's your responsibility now, your job. It's pecking order, buddy. You're at the very bottom. So you can see that the black clouds out to the south there, and that's that low moving offshore, and that rain will get pushed back onto the coastline. The swell's going to really jump, so guys are going to get caught out, I think, especially around the corner at uh, Tamarama and Bronte. The danger factor quadruples around there. Tamarama would have to be up there for one of the most dangerous beaches in Australia. Jesse, with his surfing background, and, and Bishop with his swimming background, are two superb guys to have at Tamarama today. Anyone that knows anything about surfing in Australia has heard of Jesse. He's one of Australia's premier big wave riders. Bishop, on the other hand, is one of Australia's best ocean swimmers. I started as a nipper, moved into the senior club, and then I discovered the belt swim. In my last year of racing, I won the Australian title with a belt. We work Bondi so much, but Tama and Bronte is where you can really test your skills out. You can actually almost tell the way someone's going to be able to handle the ocean before they go in the water. The guy jumped off the point here at the north end and 
we seen him go across and we thought he was all right. And we, both Jess and I kind of turned around for just one second. Before you know it, it just ripped him across so quick. When you got the Nori swirl coming straight into the Tamab, you can't even pedal against it. The current's that strong. And if you try to pedal back, you just going straight into the rocks. So then it's just game on, and we just had to act straight away. I just ran. I grabbed the flippers in the tube, ran around. I said, Jess, radio jet ski, radio Bronnie, get some backup round. It's always in the back of your mind, especially in that situation, that something could go wrong. Um, a lot of rocks around, a lot of water moving. But that's what Jesse's there for. That's why he's radioing the jet ski. That's why the guys at Bronte are coming over, just to, to back up to make sure that nothing goes wrong. As I was running up there, it was like the rain was hurting me. It was coming down that hard, and I couldn't see. I was just squinting my eyes. In the moment I hit the water, I've just got my head down and just motoring out there. I had no vision whatsoever. When you lose sight of someone, it's not a good feeling, and I tend to always think of the worst. Five percent of people wouldn't have even been able to do that swim, but you know, Bisho's a very, very good swimmer, and it was like a, a little motorboat. He was out there in two seconds. He came really close. He came really close to those rocks there. Through sheer luck, a wave must have lifted him up and put him on a ledge and pretty much taken him to safety. And I, then I looked at Jess because Jess couldn't see in and around, and I gave him the thumbs up. He's all right because there's no way Jess would have been able to see him. And, and then it was just a matter of him trying to get back around, which was the difficult part, but he eventually obviously made it. My occupation in Brazil is, is lifeguard, you know? Uh, no, no, no panic, man. I have a big wave in my country. Lifeguard help me. I come, drop in the rock. That's it. I'm here. Look. I mean, half, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's a big sigh of relief to know that I don't have to swim in there if he's not getting bashed up against the rocks. And that guy should have gone and bought himself a lottery ticket that day. He was very lucky to get up where he got up. I love you, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> The big swells have been pounding Bondi for a couple of days now. Perfect conditions for rescues. The swell's up, the sun's out, and the rips are roaring. Mate, you've got two guys in the rear. They could be lucky. It's kind of like flashes and pulls out, and it backs off. Yeah, you're on standby. They're in a terrible spot. I'm gonna go for a paddle. Just then I'm gonna have a paddle. Yeah, copy, mate. Sweet. Just had a couple of swimmers just, just uh, went out a little bit too far and they've just been dragged out in the rib and Chapo's gonna go out there, paddle, see if they're alright. These boards aren't designed to go through or under big waves. It makes our job more difficult to get out there. But we do a lot of training on them. Hey, boys, you right? We often get a hand from the board riders. The surfers know when the surf's bigger that a swimmer out of their depths, they're not going to get back in. If they see somebody in trouble, they'll go and ask them, are you OK, mate? Do you need a hand? Mate, there's a bit of a set of coaching. We've got two guys in the rib. Chapo is got one on the board, and the other guy's just hanging onto a leg rope of a surfer. Just in case something else happens, and it's worst comes worst, you should get paddled back out. It'll be good watching them come in. Getting back in, you have to be wary of sets coming and breaking on you. Missed that one. Be 
because you've got somebody who is not a good swimmer and the last thing you want to do is throw them over a, a big set head first into the sand. He could be on for a wave on the head here. <laughs> yeah, he's done a good nose dive. Sending someone down the mine is basically throwing them over a dumping wave head first into a sandbank. Yeah, it wasn't the textbook rescue that he had a bit of a nose dive, lost his patience, but good result in the end, he got them all back in. We got smashed. <laughs> good workout. Like nose dive down at the mine. And he's gone. <laughs> he just wanted to get straight out of here. It wasn't my finest rescue, but you know, it was a rescue nonetheless. <laughs> you try to avoid those situations, but you can't always. You gotta get them in. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Because you both slip the board, slip down to you like a banana. <laughs> I just felt myself plow him into the sand. He made it back. He made it back. I don't think he's going to thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, why didn't he thank you? <laughs> Saved his life. I just want to catch up just one or two waves at Tama. It's pecking order, buddy. You're at the very bottom. Taco's conduct of late has got him in a bit of strife, and he's now across the road with the bosses. Yeah, see, Taco's a trainee, has been an interesting ride. It's, his water skills are great, but outside of the, the water, he seems to struggle in other areas. Taco's come to work late a few times. I was about 30 seconds, one minute late, and these guys are just hammering me. Taco kind of just like sitting in the tower, waiting for his lunch break to go surfing. Taco just nosedived and nearly killed someone. But he is known to eat eight sandwiches at once, and then he's too full to go out and work. Yeah, Taco, I think you're on your radio. You're on your radio. It was on the roof. Oh, oh. The radio is on the roof. From what I can see, you're going really good at the things that you enjoy doing, but there's a few areas I think you'd be a little bit more proactive as a team. We've got all got to chip in and do the things that don't, people don't like doing, like cleaning the change rooms and restocking the first aid cabinet. And you know, you'll get extra points if you put your hand up and ask to do them instead of being told to do them. You gotta realise the onus is on you to prove to us that you're good enough to do the job, so. Taco, now's your time to step it up, mate. It's a big learning curve and I'm just doing my best to make sure yeah, I can come off good job. and pass my traineeship. So. Sweet. Now over the next couple of months, you'd like to see some sort of improvement and, and see his attitude change towards the job and, and really get into it and show that he, he really wants to be here and to be amongst the team. As a trainee, you just gotta do whatever you can to impress the boys, basically. Otherwise, you get the cut, you don't get the job. Right. Right, right out there. Yeah, all right, get ready. You're going to let the back. If you can hear me, if you're in trouble, put your hand up. It's the girl just sort of appeared quite far out. It's really dangerous. It was a big swell on, you know, so people weren't going too far off the shore break, but somehow this lady just got out there. Before we knew it, she was right at the back, and she was in trouble. Well, we, we went out to catch the wave together, and I went over and she went under. When she went under, took her farther out, I went over and kind of rode it back. So then we got kind of really far really quick. And I just yelled, come back. But then I just saw her kind of riding those waves and slowly getting farther and farther out. Yeah, boys, you're gonna have to go. She's hanging off the guy's surfboard. The guy's just paddled out. Mate, just hug the flag as much as you can, even come on the other side of the flag. Yeah, those guys out the back. If you can hear us, there is a lifeguard on the way. Just sit tight. It was a big day at Bondo. We had six to eight foot surf coming in, and doing a, a rescue in that bigger surf is hard because there's just no break in the waves. You just got to keep punching over, punching over, and then hopefully get a break to get out there. It's not easy. Go, Taco. It's too dangerous to be swimming. We're currently executing a rescue at the back of the flags. Come back into shore. We're going to move the flags up the beach. 
but I'm nervous that I can't get out the back because the waves are too consistent, they're too big, and no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be able to get her. She's too far out, and the rescue boards just simply can't get out there. I had to go a few waves first, and I just thought, oh, please get me out the back. And so, basically, I'm, I'm paddling. I get a good break in the waves. I get a good lull, and I just pinned it out the back, and I made it. Sakura is from California, and she's in Australia on holidays. We were getting drifted down south, and that was way too big down there to bring her in, so I started paddling up north a bit, where there was less rips and stuff, and then there was a break in the sets, and I started paddling to the impact zone. I look back and there's sets coming, just like, oh my gosh, just please do not screw this up. I just want to basically impress Hoppo and all my other team leaders. Comes a set, look, look at this fish. <laughs> and I just don't want to nosedive with loser on the board. So he does. I just had a big smile on my face going, oh, thank you. It was a successful rescue and big swell. That was a bloody good effort by Taco. He tackled it well, he got that little window and squeezed through and he did a champion effort coming in. Thank you. Look at Taco, he's got the biggest smile on his face. Good old school board rescue. A lot of guys would have raced down for the ski in the water, I reckon. Good. I love it. Well, that was the most awesome way to ever get rescued, I have to say. <laughs> he's had his grumpy little head on all day because he didn't get to go surfing, but he's done rescue of the day. Probably maybe one of the rescues of the year so far. I don't know. I don't think any of the boys could have done better than that. Proud. Oh, I realised pretty immediately that I was stuck in the riptide. As soon as I saw how far away I got from him, just after one wave, really. I dove under, he rode on top, and we were so far apart. I was having right. your eyes. Oh, what, what oh my god. <laughs> Aww. Hi, Dan Talk. Yes. That's a good one. Oh, man, I thought I was going to get smashed on that set. <laughs> I was like, oh, here we go. You were lost in the foam and you just popped out. I was more scared of not making it out the back. Yeah. Thought I was just going to get hammered trying to get out. That's enough thrills for today. <laughs> oh my god, I'm I was like so scared. Up. I was like running up and down the beach. Yeah, I'm stoked with that rescue. You're definitely in contention for the best rescue. You're leading the server so far. We're about halfway through the season and you're, you're on the top at the moment. Good work, Taco. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody who needed rescuing, so I went out. Thank you. Yeah, here you go. This is Chapo's chance of redemption, round two on the nosedive. But conditions have not eased up at all. He's facing the same task as he had before. It's not easy. Oh, I reckon he could be going two from two. It's going to be in the back of his mind. He's going to know everyone's watching even more than the last one, so we'll see how he goes. Yeah, we got Chips out the back here, trying to redeem his earlier nosedive, and he's in an even more tricky spot now, but we'll have to wait and see. It should be interesting. The ride back was a lot more cautious, so I just kind of kept asking surfers whether there are any sets coming, and I just calmly paddle him in through the break. Half a foot wave. Sweet. He's managed to get in the, inside the break and made it. I think he was pretty chuffed with himself when he got back to shore because he knew the banter would stop for a while, so you're only as good as your last rescue. That was pressure on that one. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been bagging me on the shore for sure. He's going to do it again. Got tugged out. You know, it was going to be a struggle for a swim back in, so I'm glad they came and helped me. 
but I think he should go again just to make sure he does. he's only 50 50 now. He needs to get his odds up. I've got rashes, mate. Yeah, we're in the next. <laughs> We've had a big three days. We've definitely all done our jobs really well. When you perform a rescue of someone who's in real trouble in really decent waves that are serious, that's when you can turn around and say, well, you actually saved their lives. These groups are panicking, screaming. But if you panic in the water, you're gonna drown. Oh my God, man, that's nuts. There is so much pressure for Kerbox to do this. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. And when we pulled up, I just seen their facial expressions were just like they'd been defeated. I'm probably gonna deceased one. I knew that this person wasn't gonna be alive. 